Welcome to Copy That. I'm Lauren O'Quinn here with casting director Matthew Sethic, and we are so thrilled to welcome today's special guest, actor Terry Serpico. Welcome to the show, Terry. Well, I'm very happy to be here. Thank you so much for having me. Thanks for including me. Terry, we have a friend here who wanted to say hi to you. I think you not, might know her. I think uh, you, you guys might have been married on Army Live. <laughs> hi, hubby. Hey, wifey. How okay. are you? <laughs> it's so nice to see you. Things are going well, I hope. The family is good. You guys are happy and healthy. Yep, all of that. All of the above. Happy and healthy, a little, you know, stir crazy, but I have nothing to complain about. <laughs> oh, well, that is good news indeed. And congratulations to you. You've been doing so well. I mean, The Good Witch is, is such a success. And, and you're, doing, you're doing great. I'm so, I'm so proud of you. And I'm so, I'm so proud of the work we did together. Thank you, sweetheart. Same. Same here. I'm so proud. Terry, there's somebody else that wants to say hi to you. <gasps> B-Mac. Hey. Serpico. Nice to see you, man. Hey, good to oh, see you, goodness. too, Terry. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. And we have another friend joining us. Hi, Wendy. Hi, guys. Hey, Terry. Hey, Lauren. Hey. Hey, how are you, Wendy? I'm in love with this idea. <laughs> this and is amazing. amazing. And by the way, hi, Matt and Lauren. <laughs> hi, Brian. Hi. hi. We have more oh, friends popping so in. Good to see you guys. What's oh. early? Oh. Hey, me. Yo, yo, yo. Oh, oh my goodness. What's up? The home day. Is the rest of the cast going to show up? What are you guys doing? <laughs> Bubba! Hey, oh, my God. Bubba! <laughs> There's the baby boy. Son! <laughs> What's happening, Mom? Oh, hey! Well, you and I were encouraging each other to work out. Drew? And then it was uh, the side, right? What's up, Drew? What up, CB? How are you? I'm good. How are you? Uh, oh, my goodness. Sally and Drew are together and on the screen. Okay. Uh, there's Matt. What's up, brother? Wow. Who we got? Bridget. 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 Hey, Bridge. Oh my goodness. Uh, hi, Bridge. I'll just go. Look how beautiful <laughs> you are. Oh my goodness. This is cool. I am. Oh my God. Jeremy. Yeah. Jeremy Davidson. Mainly what we're doing is centered around auditioning. So I just wanted to touch base with each of you and see what your experience auditioning for Army Wives was like. I went in and it, I mean, this, this thing crossed my desk and I was like, well, this is pretty perfect. I, 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 I was raised by this guy. You know, I know who this is. I know who, who Major Sherwood was. Um, and it's this, the, the scene where I'm, I'm uh, railing on Bubba about, um, oh God, I can't remember what it was, but uh, you know, just giving him the what for, um, and um, and so I I get I get the 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 call back to to do a, a screen test in L.A. They fly me out to L.A. and then while I'm there, they tell me, well, we want you to read for the role of the general. We want you to read for Brian's the the part that, that Brian ended up getting. Um, and uh, so I go in and I prepare that, and I go in and I do a, chem a chemistry read with Kim, and. Um, I get back to my hotel that evening and I get a call from my agent saying, well, this isn't going to go any further. And I was like, you've got to be fucking kidding me. Oh, oh my God. It was just gut, gut wrenching. So I, I got drunk and threw myself against the wall and made a mess of things. And the, the next morning I get a call from my agent and she's like, well, the reason it wasn't going any further with the general was they saw you so clearly as Major Sherwood, so you're going to book that role. Oh, my God. They could have told you that before. Exactly. Yeah. I said, why didn't you tell me that before I wake up with these, like, unexplainable bruises and <laughs> massive headache? It's, oh, my God. But so excited to be able to, to, to get that and to have this lovely woman as my wife for all those years and to, to have gotten an opportunity to meet and work with you wonderful people. Gosh, I miss you all so much. Yeah. Yeah. I think reading for the guys. general from the start because the scene that I read also was reaming Jeremy. Mm -hmm. Right, right, right. That, that was Michael that was Holden I saying, that. I heard you hit your mother, and I'm going to kick your ass if you ever do that again. Yeah. I got better. 
<laughs> well, Catherine, did you have to audition? I did not. I had the good fortune of Catherine Fuget taking me to lunch and asking if I wanted to be a part of it, which was such an honor. I mean, I read that script and was like, yes, yes, where do oh, I sign up? Fuget. That's so amazing. I have an yeah. interesting casting note. So I was, um, I had just recently gone through a divorce. And I was super excited about going to Charleston. It was going to give me the distance I needed to sort of move, move forward. And uh, so I was cast in the show. And so they asked me to come in and read the Rollins. And I was, of course, excited to do that. And so when I first saw Sterling, I was like, oh, no. <laughs> that guy looks just like my ex-husband. Like, <laughs> No and hell no, right? Like I was just like, oh my god! No. I was just like, I literally was like, Lord, not that one. <laughs> like literally, I was like, right? And then we we got in the room, and of course, <laughs> he was amazing. And I was like, well, okay, I mean, maybe you know, if that's what you want. But I literally, when I found out that he got the role, I was just like, is what do you? <laughs> Like, what are you trying to tell me? We actually used my wedding photo, my real wedding photo with no my way. husband wow. on our set. On our set uh, on our oh, that's a lot. If you just did like a quick pan, you wouldn't, you wouldn't <laughs> notice that it's not Sterling. Oh my gosh, that's crazy. But, uh, oh, Sterling Sterling was Sterling. but all that to say, uh, obviously, like the, the moment we read, I, I was like, Absolutely, and and had an amazing time working with him. How about you, Bridget? It's funny. I was thinking about it this morning, um, and I remember meeting Sally at the audition, and I was like, "Oh, that that girl, that young sparkly thing, she's got this." <laughs> Walking around like this, like, "Yeah, what are you doing here?" <laughs> and I was like, uh, "You know, trying to get a job after some years of God knows." Uh, but she's just like this. Like, all right. There were two girls up against me, and I first thought Lifetime. I thought it was. I was not very excited about it until um, I just thought it was like maybe the end of a career. Lifetime hadn't. Uh, and then I saw Mark Gordon and all these great things, and I got super excited just at the first audition. And I was like, wow, I've been a bitch. I should get on board. And then. Um, uh, when I got, uh, Catherine Juget, I think, liked me. And then when I got uh, uh, called for network or whatever, um, these two girls were there and they were honestly almost fainting. They were so nervous. Uh, and there was another redhead. And I thought only one of us is getting this, <laughs> even for the, um, for another role. But I'm like, they never have two redheads. So I'm like, honey, sorry. Sorry. <laughs> Rich, uh, but they were so nervous. I thought, well, if you're just gonna die, you might as well go home. I mean, it should be a little bit like a roller coaster. Catherine Fuget actually came out and said, you know, you could make it funny at the end. I was like, oh, she loves me. And then it was over, and I was like, it's gonna be me and this one, the cute blonde who's funny. <laughs> one of the women was talking about how she cuts up maxi pads and puts them in her shirt to soak up the sweat so she doesn't have pit stains. Yeah, and I was like, wow. maybe you should have coffee if you're this nervous and I was like maybe just you know use the blower in the bathroom just get a little air I put cold water on her face there is <laughs> or I remember there was some article in the New York Times that measured the heart rates of different professions when they were doing like the height of anxiety for their profession and they said like the highest heart rate was uh, a jet fighter pilot oh. and at wow. the second highest heart rate was an actor going in to test. No, no way. No. I can't believe it. Have you ever heard your heartbeat? I can hear it sometimes louder than my voice. I yeah, 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 yeah. I know a lot of people who will do like beta blockers. Beta blockers. Mm -hmm. And that's oh what they do. So they just keep it uber mellow or whatnot. I, I kind of find like, I look at the, the arts and athletics sort of run, running along parallel yeah. tracks. And the enthusiasm that I have going into the audition or before performance is the same sort of enthusiasm I have before playing a game. So I try mm. to embrace it as something that's like, all right, we're about, about to play right now, instead of seeing it as something you have to move away from. 
Sterling, what was your what was your audition experience like for Army Wives? Uh, let's see. So I um, I remember all the women were cast first, and then uh, went into to audition for for Roland, and I got the call back, and it was myself and two other gentlemen, and we all read with with Wendy, and. Uh, you know, I, what I remember most, more than anything, is just sort of like trying to be focused and cordial, right? Like you say hi, you, you wish everybody the best, you do your thing, but like I don't spend a lot of time like chopping it up. I probably walk up to a corner, I have the headphones, which I put on, and sometimes I'm not even listening to music, but the headphones just sort of signal, leave me the fuck alone. <laughs> the headphones, really the headphones took that signal that like I'm I'm in my space right now, trying to focus on what I need to, and I don't listen to other people's stuff because sometimes they can put you in proximity to where you can hear people through the door, mm -hmm. and like if I can start to hear somebody else, I'll just walk away, so I because I don't want their performance in my head when I go in to do my thing. And uh, I felt good. Like, I felt a good rapport with Wendy, even though I looked like her ex-husband. I missed the story, but I know the story, so don't even sweat it. Um, and it, it felt comfortable. You know, I think auditioning, as much as it is about choices as an actor, it, it really is a lot about confidence. Sort of walking into that room as if you belong in that room. You just fake it till you make it, dog. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> I had never had a test. I didn't really even know what a test was. So I was like, hey, happy to be here. <laughs> so I, I thought I had it. I was just like, glad to be here. This is awesome. Um, I did have a similar experience to Bridge um, because I was testing uh, again, one other girl at Network. And um, she, I mean, she was, she was much edgier than me, dark hair, older than me. Um, like her name, as much as, as far as I know, could have been Roxy. Like she literally looked like her name could have been Roxy. Um, we both did our things. They didn't call us back in. We both got in the elevator together to go down, which is like the most awkward course. <laughs> We're in the elevator to go down and she starts crying. And I was like, <laughs> what happened? <laughs> what happened? <laughs> like, I don't feel like it went well. I, and I just remember I was like, look, look at you. Look at me. It's not about whether you did well or not. It's whether they want you or they want me. Like, you're the best of you and I'm the best of me. So you couldn't have blown it. You've already gotten it. And it's really like, we didn't even need to go in and read. They could have just held our picture up and been like, you want little blonde or you want taller, dark haired, edgy girl? Like, <laughs> just about that. Yeah, at that point, I know that you can both do the job. So yeah. it's really about like, okay, so how does this actually fit into the story we're trying to tell? How does yeah. this yeah. Yeah. It did not seem as um, uh, yeah. sincere as that when I then booked it. I'm sure she was like, that freaking bitch was talking me yeah. down the Hater. Yeah. <laughs> she crushed it and she knew it. Mah, mah, mah. You know, Sterling was nice enough to speak. Uh, and I had a conversation about this. And one of the things that he said that I thought was just so poignant was that, you know, what's yours is yours and what isn't isn't. Like, you can't mess up what's yours. It's yeah. just great. You just have to stand in that. Like, you know, I can't tell you how many times I've seen roles where it literally, it's like, it should say Wendy Davis on it. Like, this character is so Wendy Davis. This character is more Wendy Davis than Wendy Davis. <laughs> right? And I'm like, guys, this is a no-brainer. Like, I should, this should be me. And no traction with that, right? So, and then sometimes I'll, I'll see something that I'm, you know, maybe, you know, lukewarm about or something, a character that's a stretch. And I'll get it. it. It's really, it's really, if it's yours, it's yours. If it isn't, it isn't. And really being anxious about it doesn't help you in telling the best story that you can tell in that moment. So yeah, I, mean, I, that, I felt like that was a really good note, SKD. Well, Brian, and what's your story for your audition? Mine? Yeah. Um, I got a call. Uh, created sexual favors. To, to go. <laughs> 
<laughs> I had my first interaction with the director. <laughs> um, no, I got a call to see if I could be over at uh, April Webster's office in 20 minutes, which fortunately was only about a mile away, which is 20 minutes in Los Angeles. <laughs> um, and two pretty hefty scenes, one with the wife and one with Bubba, and uh, not with him physically, but uh, I got called over to do it. And I got told on the way that they'd been looking for this guy for six weeks. and. Uh, they had a really hard time getting me in because April Webster, who has been a longtime friend and I've known for a long time, just didn't think I had it. Didn't think I was tough enough for Michael. And uh, I went in and I did this audition and I could see in, in Catherine Fouget's face that she was like, okay, all right, I got something. And, uh, and I went home and that night they said, you're gonna test, but they, they wanna be very clear they still don't think you can be tough enough. Hmm. And I told that to my daughter and she was like, are you kidding me? <laughs> Why don't you just tell them to talk to me? Yeah. <laughs> it's like, okay, good. Um, but then, you know, then I went in and, and uh, at those chemistry things, I met uh, Terry and, um, and I did my reading with Kim and, and Kim and I just had chemistry from the get go. So they yeah, uh, sure did. It was yeah. just uh, very fortunate, and I saw Sterling and Wendy at the final test audition and stuff. Sterling was going up against a buddy of mine, so when I saw Sterling, I was like, no, no, no. Sterling, you got a couple of those. <laughs> Sterling, no one was rooting for you in this role except you, apparently. I, I, uh, you know what? What's mine is mine, Lauren. <laughs> That's right. We were like, you know what? This guy's going to have a series on NBC in a few years. Don't worry about him. He'll be yeah, okay. Let's not worry about him. I think, you know, I think that brings up a really great point, Brian. A lot of times, uh, a lot of young actors, they will say, they feel like it has to be, their audition has to be a certain way, right? Like it has to come down a certain way. They need a certain amount of time. And oftentimes they're unwilling to be flexible. And I find that sometimes it's that flexibility. It's that one that you actually race to that you, mm -hmm. uh, you know, that's the one, I mean, that's the one you get. I mean, for, for army wives, I was in, I was headed to, Florida uh, to see my parents when my agent called and said they want to take you to studio tomorrow because they they had called to say that I was too young for the role so I had put it behind me so I was I was in route to Florida and I was sitting in the Dallas airport and they said they want to see you tomorrow and I was like can we do this on Monday and they said this thing's gonna be cast by Monday so I bought a ticket I you know pulled my bag off. I, I, you know, got back to LA at like two o'clock in the morning and I was there at a, I, I rehearsed my scene with a woman in the airport <laughs> <laughs> because I hadn't looked at it in two weeks. And I, and I was literally like, I have a, you know, I have a system, the, a way that I work on my audition. So one of the things I always say is I always like to voice it. I like to hear it out of another human. You know what I mean? Like yeah. to get it out. So anyway, I'm in the airport and I'm like, uh, so there was this woman like sort of sitting by herself. I was like, Hey, listen, uh, I'm an actress. And, you know, do you mind going over this, these sides with me? And she looks at me and she goes, I was in the high school drama club. So sure. right. So we go over the scene and she's like full on, <laughs> She's full. She's like doing the production. <laughs> and and uh, and so we're rehearsing and, you know, we're just doing it. And um, at the end of the uh, reading, she was like, you didn't say, you didn't say the, and you didn't say it. And like, like she was like, she wanted that shit 100%. And I was like, any, I mean, what about just the energy? Was that, how's that? <laughs> you know what I mean? She's like, that was pretty good, but you didn't say the in it, you know? And the last thing she said to me was, because she actually was getting on another plane, she goes, 
you're going to get that part. And then uh, she got on the plane. <laughs> well, good for her. Somewhere in the U.S., there's a woman that tells the story about how she is the reason Wendy Davis was <laughs> Yeah, and, and the thing that was so cool about it was that, you know, and just really just, you know, reiterating the point that <clears throat> sometimes it's not going to look how you think. You know, like Drew was like, I didn't have an agent. Like it, it I feel like with our, with our careers, acting doesn't have, it's oftentimes the momentum isn't there like in other professions, right? Oftentimes it, it, you're just kind of lifing and then something hits your inbox and then it's a seven year series. Like mm. that's why it's so important to be ready. Is Drew still with us? He's yeah, he's right there. Hey. What was your experience like? What was the question again? <laughs> <laughs> the, uh, you're That's my go-to on all Zooms now. <laughs> That's every time. Gets a laugh every time. So basically, yeah, I was, I didn't have an agent, didn't have any representation. I'm like pilot season had gone pretty shitty. Um, and I had just moved to that agency as well. And they had like reductions or whatever. And, and then I was kind of complaining to a good buddy of mine about, or just disappointed. And he goes, look, you should come to breakfast with, with me and my friend, he's directing a pilot. And so I go to breakfast and that's when I met Ben Younger, who was directing the pilot. And I didn't bring up that I was an actor or nothing. Like we just sat down at breakfast and we started talking and like, we talked about motorcycles and basketball and surfing and, this, that, and the other. And he's like, hey man, so you're an actor, yeah? And I go, yeah. And he goes, well, do you want to come and read for this project I'm doing? And I said, yeah, I'd, I'd love to. And he's like, well, where are you wrapped? And I'm like, well, I have a manager. And he's like, I'll call, let me call your manager. I'll get you an appointment. Like, I want you to come and pre-read for me. So I go in and Ben's there with, I think, Deb Spera and Mark and Marshall. So I walk in and I, th I see Ben. And I think he's going to be like, hey, what's up, Drew? Or like just something. He's stone cold, like oh, ice yeah. cold. Yeah. And it's, it's good because I was like, all right, it's like, this is straight business. I do, I do it for them. And Ben jumps up and goes, that's my buddy. Like, that's my friend. He's like, come here, <laughs> give me a hug afterwards. And he's like, I didn't want them to know that we were friends. Um, and like, I only met him at this point once literally once at breakfast and then that led to coming in for a test and you ben at that time impression. had said he's like dude you're the guy like fouget loves you you're the guy you're the guy and then randomly out of nowhere another friend had put me up for an hbo show mm -hmm. and i tested for that hbo show simultaneously so i'm agentless and now i'm testing for two shows meanwhile i hadn't had an audition in like six months Wow. And now I'm like, oh, it's HBO. I'm definitely going to do the HBO show if I get it. <laughs> definitely. HBO doesn't call back. And all of a sudden, Ben calls like, hey, dude, they found another person for Trevor. So now I'm like, whoa, 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 wait a second. <laughs> I, I want in on Trevor. And he's like, hey, you got you to test. And I'm like, all, all right, I'll come test. And that was a, a read opposite Sally. And I walk, I remember getting in the elevator. It was in like, what, Century City? Yeah. And... <laughs> I see this, I Reach see my crying, girl in the and it's like this dude who looks uh, exactly like Sally, like uh, Sean William Scott, Sean Everett. No, that's not who it was. His name no. was like Will something. Will Lee Scott. Sean William Scott. Will Lee Scott. This where it came into audition for. No, yeah, no, <laughs> And no. he's like boot, belt buckle, boots, Southern accent, I'm a oh, fuck. Now I'm now I'm Sally's comp. The, I'm I'm the dark edgy brunette who's like I'm sweating. Edgy, edgy. Oh, man. The color was the yeah, that's, that's, that's the edgy. first word I come up with. You know, I'm thinking Drew Fuller. Edgy. Oh yeah, he's edgy. And I'm so fucking nervous. I'm like because now I have everything to lose. Before it was just like I was playing with house money, but now it's like oh shit. I, I'm. So basically, Fouget comes up to me and she goes, "Hey, you're 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 my choice. Just go in there and just be Trevor. But you're I, you're my choice." And I was like, "Oh, thanks. Okay. Wow, how nice." Um, and I go in and I I read opposite Sally. That was the test, and 
I didn't know it at the time, but I think it was like something like a whoop or something. Like I got all excited when I proposed and she said yes. If you watch the pilot, he, oh, yeah, it was something where, was it the proposal? Were you proposed? Was it the proposal? And he, he proposed and I said yes. And he jumped up and goes, woo! And I was like, ugh, too much. Well, they loved it. <laughs> Amazing. Sure. Too much. Too my much. edge really, so my much. edge really worked, and I got the job. <laughs> All the edge. It was my edge. We have to hear Jeremy Davidson's story about casting. I mean, the guy is out in his apple orchard in upstate New York. <laughs> we got to hear it. Literally, <laughs> you got to come well, full circle. It's about it's, you. My casting story. I don't, I don't know who these people are actually. I was, Drew told me I, I I barely recognize anybody. Here. My audition, I, you know, it was really, I, I think, I'm not sure if Bridget mentioned this, but, you know, our, our couple was based, uh, we were based on a couple that had a really hard ending. It was a murder-suicide. Murder-suicide. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, so I think, I, script. yeah, and it was, it was, I think I was only intended to be there for an episode or two and thank God, um, uh, it, it turned out to be the way it did. They chose a much happier path for our, for our relationship than, <laughs> than the couple we were based on. Um, but, uh, you know, it was a magical time and I, and, and I, and I hold that those years very, uh, they were very important to me. And, yeah. um, and all these, all you guys, I, I mean, I think of you constantly and it's, it's uh, real lucky, really lucky. Hey, D, because you were recurring, did you have, you didn't have to Test. It was just uh, a regular audition and then an offer, yeah? That's right. I went in once and went on tape and then um, got an offer and then, uh, yeah, it, it, we shot that pilot and I think I think there we had two small scenes in it and then, um, but I also didn't get sick of you guys. I know you guys went through periods of time where you were sick of each other. But because I wasn't there all the time, I always looked forward to seeing everyone. <laughs> and I, and I really did, and it was really magical. I'd get to go down and hang out in Charleston for a few weeks or whatever it was, a few days, and and then and that continued. And I never ever got sick of going there and seeing everybody. And you know, it, it, that's a, you know, you guys were definitely a family uh, living there as much as yeah. as long as you had to. But I was lucky in a lot of ways. Okay, so Ben Younger. Uh, he was the one that basically gave me the role. Um, but uh, how we had our first interaction, um, I'd already been through two different auditions for it. Um, I've had so many different auditions. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Um, and, uh, yeah, so two different auditions. They called me to uh, high output for um, the last audition, if you will. I mean, it was about a month between the two auditions. So I didn't even think that I was even in the running for it. Um, and I go sit down in this chair, um, and then this guy comes up, he's tall, looks, you know, young, um, he's got curly hair, he's got glasses, he sits down, he sits down right next to me and starts talking to me about surfing. He's like, so Folly Beach, you know, are there big waves around here? And I started telling him about the hurricane, so we have big waves because of that. And, um, <laughs> it was just kind of, you know, bonding with, uh, Ben Younger for about 15 minutes before Richard Futch came in and uh, asked us to come in. And he's like, oh yeah, I'm, I'm Ben, nice to meet you, I'm the director. Um, and <laughs> by building up that kind of rapport with him before when I went into the audition, I mean, it was the um, Jeremy Slaps Denise scene. So it was, um, you know, I'd rehearsed it a bunch, but I wasn't really worried about it and uh, kind of just thrown it away and thinking that, you know, if I don't get this, I really like this role. It's fun, it's dynamic, it's not leaning up against a locker and, you know, it'll meet you under the, uh, the bleachers after the game. So it was a fun role and I, I really wanted it. Um, but uh, yeah, I didn't hear anything back for about three weeks and then they told me that I got it. And then that's when we met at the Mills house. I learned so much and I mean, obviously, 21 is when you know I started uh you know doing this stuff so it was uh it's definitely made me the whole experience with all of you guys have taught me so much and it's made me who I am today um of course there are some other things around there but um I was very grateful for all of your information every single person that has taken me aside and given me a little you know tip but just that you guys you know took me under your wing and um and showed little Charleston actor Bubba 
how to, you know, operate in that crazy train environment. Uh, Bubba, can I share with them the first tip I ever gave you? I, yes, yes. I we remember doing our scene together, our first scene where I rip him a new asshole. And he, he's all into this acting thing and he comes in each scene and he's, <laughs> he can't help but smile and laugh. And I'm pissed off and I go, dude, if you laugh during this scene, I will kick your goddamn ass. <laughs> No, yeah. you didn't. That was it. That was my acting tip. You know, Matt has mentioned to me several times how special working on Army Wives was. That it was a, a really special collaboration. Do you guys feel the same way? Is does work your time on Army Wives stand out in contrast to your time on other shows? Yeah, no question. Oh yeah, without a doubt, absolutely. Yeah, so special, such Play, a special people, everything. Yeah. It was I, I hate it. It really was. I still hate these people. I think one of the things that made it so special was that we were all away from home. So mm. we really had to become a family because we were away from our families. Um, yeah. And I think that, that, that that's what made it so uniquely special and made us all so uniquely clo um, close. Yeah. In a really like special Gina place, too. Charleston's yeah, a special Charleston place. Was yeah. So special. Yeah. I'm still here. I would add to, to, to it, Lauren, that the subject matter of dealing with military families, like every time I flew into Atlanta, which had this big hub uh, for like army deployments, et cetera, like you would see all these families that would come up yeah. to you. Yeah. Like, oh, you helped us get to this last deployment. Like, mm -hmm. thank you so much for telling this particular story because they hadn't seen a lot of it. So just knowing that the show had an impact for the folks whose stories we were trying to tell, that, yeah. that always, that means. Oh, sure, that makes sense. And I mean, it was such a timely show. There were conflicts happening around the world at that time. And so yeah. I'm yeah, sure that- still are. Yeah, and there still are, obviously, I've obviously yeah. I've been with Catherine Fouget. Uh, Brian and I were talking about it a little bit, about trying to, uh, I don't know, address this show again not necessarily trying to recreate it but to continue it somehow because there are still so many stories out there there are still mm -hmm. so many uh soldiers in in harm's way and in, in conflict um and this show i mean could have continued on and we all could have cycled out like army families do and new yeah. families could have cycled in lifetime could still be making money on this show it really that's yeah, true people came up to me and I believe it's three times that someone had came up to me and said, your show helped me get through my son's funeral. Mm, your wow. show helped me deal with that grief from my, my soldier who was killed in action. Wow. And that's, that's just a remarkable that's legacy for our show. Beautiful. You know, I live in a, we live in a small town in upstate New York and we've been here for about eight years. Uh, we're about two hours north of the city. And I think, my own experience, at least, being an actor in New York or Los Angeles, uh, I did get a bit detached from the majority of, of our country, what people go through, not just military families, but how small towns rely on um, the social organizations uh, like VFWs, or American Legion. They're really important. They've been very important to a lot of, a lot of people. And... Um, so since we moved here, I would say that if I wasn't on Army Wives, there is a resistance to what's called cityites moving into small towns in upstate New York. And Army Wives gave me um, an entry, uh, mm. and it helped me, helped our family um, become a part of this small town in, in a very direct way and a very important way for us at this time of our life. But... Um, and that does continue, and 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 uh, I'm really grateful for that. I wanna I wanna circle back to um, you know we were talking about the audition process, and one of the things that really helped me in the audition was I would vacillate between thinking about how much money I was going to be making, um, <laughs> and and uh, like who I was doing it for. Mm -hmm. And whenever I was thinking about myself, like, I'm going to get this. Because, you know, you've already signed your contract and you've already added up that money. <laughs> so you're literally like, 
I could get a boat, <laughs> all right? <laughs> the biggest doodad in the world, right? So whenever I was thinking about like, what's in it for me? What is it gonna do for me? That would make me nervous. Mm. But whenever I thought about the women that I was representing, like it even chokes me up today. Like, I don't think that, I don't think that a African American soldier, female soldier, look, I'm getting, I'm getting, that story's never been told. Totally underrepresented. As a three dimensional character, mm -hmm. like that woman, that story has never been told in America and may never be told again. Mm -hmm. And so in the audition, I would, I, I, I would feel myself like sort of floating into like, Ooh, I'm going to get this and I'm going to get that. And, and that would make me anxious. But the moment I focused on those women, like, listen here, Wendy, mm -hmm. you're up to bat. You're the one that's going to tell this story today. Tell it the best that you absolutely can. Cause it, cause it deserves to be heard. And and that would put me back into my power when I was standing for someone else. Right. I, I was, that's, that's, I was that's better. I was better when I was all when I was standing for someone else and representing these women versus what what is this going to do for me? Well, yeah. that makes sense. I think that's true for all humanity, right? We're better when we're standing for something else, for someone else. Yeah. Uh, if you had to pick one favorite memory from working on Army Wives, what would it be? You know, I, I don't. I don't mean this as a cop out to this answer, um, to not being able to think of one specific moment. But quite honestly, for seven years, going to work every day was my greatest moment. Yeah. Yeah. Working with that crew and this cast. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It was fantastic, and. As you'll all remember, almost every director or guest star that came to town loved that situation. Mm. It changed them. But Brian, <laughs> what your first time directing Army Wives, what was that experience like? Oh yeah. That that was awesome. Um the the prep was a lot of fun, but Driving to work that very first day of shooting, driving down that driveway to our dressing rooms and that stages, thinking there are a hundred people here who, if I don't know what I'm doing, they're all going to stand around. And that's bad. And I was nervous, really nervous about that, but really excited. And then just the fact, and this is my favorite part about directing, being with the cast and crew from first thing in the morning until everybody wraps at the end of the day. Doesn't get any better than that. Maybe not the best, but like memorable. Season one of Army Wives, Randall has an affair. <clears throat> Rolling. Oh. <laughs> wow. We know you're on This Is Us. We got it. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> I've played. Like, I, I did a movie called Waves, and the character's name was Ronald. It was <laughs> oh, Ronald, no. Roland, and Randall. Oh, my God, it's an anagram. I apologize. That was awesome. Yeah, I know. So, wait, I should play as Steve. <laughs> Roland has an affair. And, um, and so that was sort of crazy. And my mom had been watching every week of the show, and she's like, I just love how pink <laughs> Roland is and how he's so for his wife and it's just so sweet. And I'd already shot the affair and I was like, oh, thanks, Ma. I appreciate that. So like each week she calls me and the week that Roland has the affair, my mama don't call me on the phone. <laughs> <laughs> not call me. And then for like the next two or three episodes on the previously on Army Wives, they show a clip of Roland just getting down with this chick who's not his wife, right? <laughs> my, my mom, like after three weeks, we're on the phone. I'm like, Mom, what are you think of the show? She goes, I wish they quit showing that mess! <laughs> <laughs> I remember that story so well. <laughs> wait, but wait, 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 the best part is that like people on the street in Charleston 
would be like, I can't believe you did that. And I was like, guys, Sterling, like, what's going on? Like, it was so intense. And then finally, by the end of the season, people were like, okay, we can get down with you again. Like, everything is cool. Like, that was incredibly memorable. What, what were you going to add? So just briefly, that actress, I cannot remember her name off the top of I my can't head. Either. But we were auditioning for an ABC Family show. We were testing. And she walked in, and I looked up, and I just had this moment. I was like, oh, my God, you slept with my husband. <laughs> and and, and <laughs> I realized like, she turned sheet white. She looks at me, beads of sweat. Like, and I'm like, no, oh, no, 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 no. <laughs> Favorite memory from Army Wives? when uh, they were ending our marriage um, and uh, uh, Bridget, Bridget was always, uh, Bridget was amazing. You were amazing to work with. And uh, from the pilot, every single episode, we would always get together and give them hell about the way they were shaping our relationship or <laughs> what we didn't like or what, what we did like, what we didn't like, and and they knew they they remained open to us. We had to battle them a lot of the time, but they remained open to us. Anyway, my favorite memory was um, how the, the the when the script came in and they were ending our marriage, we didn't like what they had written, and they trusted us and they let us go, and we spent hours and hours and hours trying to figure out well, how would we how would our marriage end? And um, I really, that, that's extremely rare for, for any producers to let actors do that. It's, I mean, it happens, but um, I just thought that was, that we were really um, fortunate to have that chance. And I will never forget that because it was, um, I don't know, it was, it was a beautiful, beautiful, time with you Bridget and and I, I felt really lucky that they gave us that opportunity to say no this is how we would want it to end and we got to write that scene for ourselves. Uh, Richard and, right what was yours? Amazing. Um, I went from a bartender in Charleston to on this show with you guys so it was it, everything was so exciting um, but I think the the coolest part the 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 episode I would say was the death episode um I got to play army I got to shoot guns but to see how everybody portrayed that situation so reverently as we do everything else um but just that episode um everybody they're all and it was such an important moment to tell um and uh it definitely resonated with a good percentage of the entire world anybody that's lost somebody so just to be a part of that a part of that story was very cool um that's the cool part uh or the uh <laughs> the emotional part there was there's also one time that i always laugh about <laughs> sorry <laughs> the reverent to uh to the scene where kim and i drew you're around where is he all right so all right, kim and i had that gazebo scene so we had that gazebo scene where we lost our virginity to each other in the first season, remember that? So I forgot the director's name, but there was a scene where we were standing up and then we laid down and it was, you know, I was kissing and making out and everything that I laid down. But, you know, you get so caught up in your character and everything and things happen. Um, and so I was laying down and then I had to come back up to shoot the next scene or, or shoot the next take. Um, and I wasn't completely, uh, reserved i haven't i hadn't um brought myself down from the last take and uh and the director said oh richard are you okay and i'm like oh no no i'm fine i'm fine i'm fine it's just i gotta i gotta calm he goes oh no no okay it's, sh just tell me when you're ready and he goes to the back and i'm expecting everybody to like you know be respectful of this no <laughs> and then like you know, then, yeah, I'm quick just a quick bubba uh bubba segue i said bubba bubba segue <laughs> Um, I made a word. I coined it. Away. This, I, I just want to like, you're, you're 35 now, Bob? Yeah, man. 36 in September. 36 in September. Like, I want to applaud you for stepping in to this show like a champ, man. I like, 
that, man. You, you, you are such an affable and gregarious and just like warm individual and you're goofy. Like you're goofy and lovable and all that stuff. But when you are on set, you are there to play. Man, and like play in the best way possible. And, and you said something about yourself being a Charleston actor. There's no St. Louis actors or New York actors. Uh, like, and you showed up and you did the damn thing. So I just wanted to like yeah. give you. Yeah. I see that, man. Yeah. 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 I mean, I grew up playing sports. I was the, I was the actor that uh, would come with a football injury or like, you know, um, a sprained ankle and stuff like that. So they told me that I needed to give up sports to start doing acting. So, um, dude, that scene that we did, I mean, you know the scene, where we went, you know, just head to head. Bro, that, that gave me the most reward, rewarding feeling after getting that out, which was such an important story to tell with the post-traumatic stress and everything. And the fact that we went to VA and like studied and everything, it was so cool. And yeah. just to play ball with you, bro, was awesome. Like, <laughs> you go back and forth. And this is not diminishing anybody else. Like, Terry, Jesus, Catherine, oh my gosh, you know, like our scenes, you know, we, we or Brian, we a lot of stuff. But that was Brian. Brian next. Oh, Brian. Or Drew. Yeah. You love working with Brian too. <laughs> no, you scared the shit out of me. Oh no, sorry, no, 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 Brian, of course. <laughs> How about Drew? I have such specific memories of things on set and off that still. Like literally, I think I called Sterling a week ago telling a story that made me, I was crying laughing on a message about a story that happened while we were in Charleston. Yeah. And the fact that I can still count, like I call some of you guys still some of my closest friends. I think the, the biggest reward is the fact that it's been able to extend for- Which ones? Uh, <laughs> they'll remain nameless. <laughs> But like funny specifics, real fast, rapid fire. I like, and these are just funny anecdotes. Anecdotes for me, like playing golf with Terry and Brian, and Terry ordering a Mick Ultra. I don't know why Christ. that makes me laugh. But like, I don't know if anyone's ever ordered that beer in the history of the world except for Terry, and he like was like, "What? It's a great beer," and he was like justifying. I'm a unique person. You very. It was beautiful. Uh, being at this restaurant, Taco Boy with Jeremy, and there was this group of girls that basically came up to our table, and Jeremy like broke up, broke out into like a flop sweat, pulled out his phone and started show, showing photos of Mary Stewart and all his kids because he didn't know what to do. <laughs> Just panicked, panicked. Um, binge watching Game of Thrones and 50 other shows with Sterling, like the countless days of golf with Brian, like drinks with Bridge. Go Wendy, you showing me your house is one of the funniest, most favorite, like I cannot, I still remember you taking me and Sterling on a tour of your house. Look, I see Sally and David obviously all the time, two of my greatest friends and, you know, CB, I don't see you often, but you know, obviously just like the memories of being there and just it's like the cool house at the parties you threw out at the house. And I remember specifically showing up at what Sullivan's Island and or whatever the island was out there. And it was like the season premiere and you were hosting everyone. And I walk in a little late and everyone's crying. Like just things like that, that just stay with me and have stayed with me for over a decade. And it's like, I love all of you guys. And like, it's, I look back at it fondly as some of the greatest times of my life. The whole first season was really magical. I mean, I think if you look back at all of our audition stories, Catherine Fuget comes up in every single one of them as this kind of angel over the show, um, picking each person. We were all her picks. Like she didn't not get a single one of her picks. Um, and the stories that unfolded and the characters that unfolded in that first season, like that's what the whole show was based on. And um, she's just, she's the magical being that, you know, was there the entire time, even though she wasn't there the entire time. Um, I'm so grateful to her for this experience. I'm so grateful to her for introducing me to you guys. I remember when we were at the rap party for season one and Harry announced that we had gotten picked up for season two. 
-hmm. and and I'm like, yeah, yeah, you know, like, yeah. And Brian's standing right next to me, and he just like leans over, and he's like, this doesn't happen. <laughs> this doesn't happen. I believe I was crying. <laughs> you were crying. It is. You were crying. If memory <laughs> serves me, it's the first time you made it to season two. Is that correct? Yes. <laughs> yeah. So it's 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 that, and it's you know, I mean, the the if you ever like go back and watch that pilot again, mm -hmm. like the way that each of us meets each other in the pilot, each of our characters meet each other in the pilot, that like magic that that like burst is how I feel seeing each of you now and how I feel about how I met each of you. It was a really incredible time, I think, for all of us. None of us had, had like, you know, none of us had really experienced that before and the camaraderie mm -hmm. before and the family before. And, um, you know, to be part of a show that means something to a group of people who are so important to our livelihood and to our existence. Um, there's, there's nothing like that. Yes. Great. Diffuge. Yes. Uh, Bridget. I had done a, uh, some shows, a bunch of shows that had either, uh, you know, gone a couple of seasons or just didn't go, but something always seemed to not work and be kind of, uh, a bummer. And, um, and I had really not a lot of expectation for Army Wives. I literally thought, I didn't have the best opinion of Lifetime, different things. And, and yet everything, I kept trying to just open my mind. I was like, well, this seems all right. This seems good. This person's nice. So I just kept going with it. And, but my expectation was really like, well. And by the time we got to Charleston and I met everyone and the producers and I'm, we're at the Mills house and I'm looking out and I'm thinking, wow, I love this role. I love this place. I love everybody I've met. I feel like I'm part of something really, I mean, I got this overwhelming feeling that this is, this, I've stumbled into a really good thing. And the only thing they hadn't done yet is cast my husband. And I thought, God, God, do not screw this one up. This is, this is um, you know, don't make this one go south, please. Like everything seems great. And then um, I remember Marshall, came in from the beach and her hair all like this. She's got a towel walking in the lobby of the Mills house and her glasses, like three pairs of glasses on. <laughs> and the towel went and she goes, your husband, we cast him. He's coming in. You're going to meet him in a minute. I'm like what? What? <laughs> and uh, she literally did not have time to change. She said a towel and she's like, he's in there. I'll be down in a second. And I walk in and Jeremy Davidson, whom I had seen on, uh, I watch Law and Order constantly, and I'd seen him like on three different episodes where he played a really nice guy, a really innocent person, wronged, and then he played another one, criminal. Like, what, what's wrong with you, fucking Bobby? <laughs> and I was like, oh my God, he's amazing. I've seen everything. And I was just like, wow, it, it just got, it got even better. It can't get any better. And um, I just had this moment of, uh, really lucky and it hadn't even we hadn't even shot yet mm -hmm. um but that's my favorite feeling one of the funniest is sally and drew <laughs> sitting at uh we're all like oh you got to get an apartment you gotta you know we got to figure out where to live here um you know if this goes and they said hey how about drew <laughs> said hey how about wouldn't it be cool if we all lived together we got this really big place and we all live together. And I worked with a lot. I grew up in a big family and I've worked with a lot of big groups. And I was like, no, no, that wouldn't be cool at all. <laughs> I, I realize you think that now. No, and you're great. They're like, no, but we get along. So I'm like, and yes, but it would not be. This is I, bad I don't remember this at all. <laughs> it's, I, I was like, it's this. This a poor choice. This doesn't actually sound like me either. Oh yeah, you and Sally were like, get a mansion. You're like, get it, Bridge. We can do this. We can have this. Oh, Take care of the bridge. <laughs> and I was like, this is a really bad idea. It's not gonna. <laughs> yeah, oh my God. I'm in the same boat as Wendy. And like, uh, 
it's too much to really um, pick one, to be honest. But I mean, there's just so many, like, it was such a big part of my life. This little guy is hiding down in the bottom of my car. He was born. <laughs> he was born on our show. No, he's not. nine. He's almost 10 now, which is crazy. Wow. Wow. Um, and yeah, so he was born in Mount Pleasant and Gemma was raised there, went to Ashley Hall and, you know, got to experience just Charleston's, you know, finest. She still considers herself a Charleston girl. Um, but I mean, just in terms of working with all of you guys, it was such a special experience for me. Um, such incredible, challenging, rewarding work. I think that when Bubba, Bubba's character, when Jeremy died, um, that was that was crazy. The scenes that I got to do with each of you, um, with Kim, who's not, not here with us right now, but, and Terry, the stuff that we were dealing with as, as parents and he had just been born. So for me to be, um, playing the, you know, the loss of my son with my, my newborn, um, and just being able to do all of that work with all of you guys who gave so much, such talented, I feel so, so blessed to have worked with each of you truly. Um, and uh, I, I just have like the best memories of that place. Just having you guys over my, my house, going to the beach, going out having wine after work. Like just, it was some good times. I miss it. I miss all of you guys. I'm, I'm, with, I'm with so many of you in that there was a, there, there's a totality. There's, there, there's kind of this gestalt to, to, to Army Wives that it was something that mattered. It was something that mattered to a group of people that I felt were underrepresented and being a, an army brat myself, um, that we were telling stories about the soldiers and their families. Mm -hmm. And I think when Army Wives first started, it was called Army Wives and it was gonna be about the wives. But what they realized was without the context of the husbands, without the context of the soldiers, not just the husbands, but the soldiers, um, then we don't understand the, the 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 sacrifices that the, the the families make, that the wives make, that 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 you don't get a functioning strong military without strong families, and what our what our show was able to communicate and was able to elucidate was the fact that that it's not just the soldiers that that make the sacrifices; it's the families that make these tremendous sacrifices, sending their loved ones into, into harm's way to protect our way of life, to protect our, 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 our rights to free speech, to protect the, you know, the, the things that we hold so dear. Um, and this show and everyone that I got an opportunity to work with, all of you that are here today, I can't thank you enough for being here today. It's just <laughs> unbelievable. Um, and the, 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 the crew that we worked with and so many of them that I have subsequently worked with over the years. I mean, Dave Justice and I were talking uh, that, that he and I have worked together for 10 years, which never happens in this industry. Um, but the, the opportunity to, to, to be a part of this show and I was, I was really quite a neophyte when this, when this, this came together and, and, um, to, to have all these friendships that are there that are so continuing to this day um, is is just so touching and 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 that this show continues to resonate with people uh, and people still contact me and they're like you know let's what, there's 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 more there's you know um, it just it, it just blows me away that, that this that this show touched a nerve in the way that it did and that it, 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 it um, it told people the story about a, a part of our society that we depend upon so greatly and don't even think about it sometimes. Um, I, I got to tell you that, that, that one of the, 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 the memories that sticks in my mind is, is uh, Brian's drunken colonel. Uh, every time we were at, the, we were at the, 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 the headquarters and he's giving a speech or something and, and <laughs> he's, got, he's got a captive audience there and there's just nothing he can do to stop himself from, from performing. And I'm like, oh my God, I wish I had that kind of comic ability and just that, that freedom. <laughs> When 
I, when I, when I got to, to work with Catherine day in, day out and know that um, as soon as we looked at each other, we were ready to go. Um, that, that meant the world to me as, as an actor and as a person to know that I've got somebody that I trusted and that I was, I was putting in myself in her hands and I, I knew that I was in good hands. Um, and I felt that way about each and every one of you. Um, that any time I worked with any one of you, I knew I was going to get your A game. And I think we all brought our A game to one another. And that's one of the things that made this show so special and made it such a, 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 a profound experience for all of us. It's not, it was, it was, it was the family that we created and the, 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 the love that we had for each other and the respect that we had for one another's craft and the respect for one another's people that, that, that created this tremendous magic for this show. And I miss you all so much. Miss you too, big dog. Yeah, real quick before we let you guys go, because we so appreciate the time that you've devoted to it. Um, do any of you have any audition horror stories? When I first uh, moved to Hollywood, I, I had a background in theater. Mm -hmm. And so I was accustomed to um, either working with someone on stage or doing a monologue, right? That was sort of my experience in theater. Oh God, monologues. <laughs> and monologues, remember those? I remember those. So, so anyway, this was like one of my very first auditions. And I went and I did a reading with the casting director and she was sitting like behind her desk and, you know, we just did it that way. And so I was very excited because I got a call back. And so in the callback, she was kind of sitting near me. <laughs> and so I, the, in the scene, I was required to hug the character and oh. cry on their shoulder. <laughs> right. So obviously I couldn't jump over the desk in the pre-read to do that. So I, you know, I just kind of kept my distance. But in the callback, <laughs> she, she was, was kind of right. out there with me. And I was like, well, I mean, if this was another actor on stage, I would. <laughs> so literally, I remember walking into the audition and the, I remember they were pleasant. They all had like these pleasant smiles on their faces, you know? And then we did the scene and I just walked over and I just like hugged her <laughs> and just grabbed her and held her. And, and, uh, and then afterwards, I remember like, like, that was so good. And then I looked at them and the look on their face, they were like disgusted. I was like, right? So oh then my, my agent uh, pages me because we didn't have cell phones, right? Yeah. And I'm like, you know, uh, that audition went well. I don't know what they're talking about because that, that would have killed in theater, right? <laughs> I was like, what are you talking about? So my agent calls me and just is like furious because, you know, apparently, you know, she was like, she was very upset about it. The producers were very upset about it. My age, everybody was so mad at me. <laughs> and that's when I was like, theater auditions are different <laughs> than TV and film auditions. <sighs> this is pre-corona. Can you imagine what would happen now if you reached over and grabbed the casting director and hugged them? <laughs> totally, totally. Like... <laughs> Yeah. Yeah, that was a great story. Thanks, Wendy. <laughs> Anybody else have a great uh, horror story from auditioning or embarrassing moment like that? Horror story so much as like, uh, so I went in for, and this was either during our show or immediately after. I went in for something called The Originals, like a oh. spin off of the Vampire. Oh, yeah. 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 So I went in for this audition, <clears throat> prepared for it, had like an accent for this whole thing, right? And I'd watched a couple of episodes of the show and I was like, I get this. This is sort of evil characters. It's going to be a lot of fun. And like, nor rarely do I go into an audition and be like, I smashed that joint, right? And this one, I was like, I smashed that joint. So I was like, I'm waiting for the phone call to say like, when do you show up in Atlanta or New Orleans, wherever they show the show. Called my manager. I was like, have we heard anything? She's like, they went another direction. I was like, impossible. Uh. I said, God, you gotta hate hearing that. 
I was like, impossible, right? And she's, I was like, okay, give me some feedback. Tell me, tell me what they're looking for. And she said, they just decided to go in another direction. I drove back to the casting office. No. Went back to the casting director. And I said, hey, guys, what happened? <laughs> I, said, I said, tell me what happened. And they're like, you know what, dude? You friggin' smashed it, like honestly. And I was like, I appreciate that. And they wound up hiring a friend of mine. His name is Oiso Odell, um, Kenyan cat. And um, I love it. And I was like, okay. So it went to a friend of mine. So I, I like did my ujjayi and just sort of like let it go. But I had never, like, I, to this day, from OJ to this is that's the, it's the best audition I've ever had. And I didn't get it. So there you go. I mean, and the, the, the caveat to that is having been a reader on the other side of the table, I've witnessed people give dope ass auditions and seen producers be like, nah, they're not quite what I was looking for. So you can go in, smash the joint. Has nothing to do with you sometimes. Mm. All you can hope for is to put your best foot forward, let it go. I was auditioning for Artists Descending a Staircase. It was, I think it was a Broadway show or something at the time a Tom Stoppard thing. And um, it, I, you know, I'm, I'm going through the audition and, 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 and there's a, a, a at, at some point, the, the, the character is on a horse. You know, it's like, I'm supposed to be on a horse. And so at the end of the audition, I do the whole thing. And then I, as an afterthought, I kind of go, mm. No. <laughs> <laughs> I got, I got fucking laughed at. I, literally, there was laughter in the room. And this was, this was not a comedy, right? Oh, God. It's memorable. It's memorable, you know? Yeah, you left an impression, for sure. <laughs> I, I auditioned for that cast. Oh, God, I wish I could remember her name, because I, I, we're, we're kind of friendly. Oh, Jesus. But it's just one of those things where it's like, you know, you, you, you take your shot <laughs> and ridiculous as it is, the whole audition process is just so fucking foreign to what human experience is sometimes. Um, and you just try to bring your humanity to it. You just try to do the best you can do with what you got in front of you. Those were great. Thank you guys for sharing those with us. How many of you would be in for a reunion special for Army Wives? Would you would you show up if they did if they wrote a great script? Yeah. yeah. Oh yeah. It might be hard for you. Well, yeah, it'd be hard for you. <laughs> yeah. If I, I feel like the show didn't get the send off it deserved. Oh no, no, it just stopped, <laughs> man. A lot of, Roxy. A lot of, I think a lot of things like one, the fact that the cast had changed over by that point. Um, I think that the fact that that was the closure is very hard for people. Mm -hmm. um, I've also heard from people that there was this um, cliffhanger for Alyssa's character. Um, and everyone's like, we will never know who she chose. And that's annoying. Like, I think that there, there's a lot that was left open-ended, a lot of stories that were left open-ended. And it's like, it kind of is like when you just have a bad taste in your mouth. And it's like, I need to clean, I need to cleanse the palate. I need to go out on a show that meant so much to me. I need to go out and feel good yeah. about the wrap up. And so I think if, you know, I mean, I don't know that this is even a possibility, but like if we got Fuge in there to wrap it up in a Fuge way, mm -hmm. um, make people feel good. You know, I, I have a, um, a show right now that, I, that I'm like absolutely obsessed with. Um, it was on Amazon Prime. They got two seasons and then it was just like, like cut, done, overdone. And I can't get over how much I need more. And it's kind of the first time that I've understood what people have told me about how they feel um, post Army Wives, if they've gone all the way through. There's just like, 
when something means so much to you that you let into your house and into your life and into your world over and over and over, and it isn't, it isn't like satisfactorily concluded, it's, it's really unsettling. Yeah, right. I'm, I'm upset about it. <laughs> <laughs> well, reunions are all the rage. So I personally am rooting for an Army Wives reunion show. But in the meantime, it's been so great to see you all together again. And we thank you so much for spending your time with us during this quarantine and letting me just sort of eavesdrop thank into you. your world. So I really appreciate it. And I know Matt does too. Matt, thank you for setting all this up. Well, and thank you guys for, you know, thank you for being so willing to participate. You must be pretty loved, Terry, because Matt lured them all in with you. So they all showed up to see you. <laughs> 100%. Don't tell me that. I'm going to start crying. And, you know, it's, it's, it's crying Brian and tearful Terry. <laughs> Aaron <laughs> guess that you may cry at this. Locally <laughs> connected officers in the U.S. military. Oh, now you all love just need you guys to so off. much. Yes. You yeah. all love you guys. Love you guys. Thank you. Thank you. Everybody stay Thank you guys. safe. Yes. Take care. It's been a good day. Today's been a good day. Today's been a great day. Today's been one of the best days I've had in the last, I don't know how long. It's so, so good to see you all. We love you very much. We gotta do this again. It in your, I found it in your mother's closet. What? It doesn't look, look good on me. You are so pretty. <laughs> you are so pretty. You're so prettier. Pretty. That's one thing. Delicious. Wait until you see what's for dinner. Oh. You don't have to go to all this trouble. Dinner in 10. 10 minutes till dinner. Dinner in 10. This will be ready in about 20 minutes. Sounds good. Go upstairs and get ready for dinner. What about dinner? There's food in the fridge. Plus there's frozen gumbo in the freezer. Dinner's almost ready. I'm not hungry. Uh, dinner is ready. Shall we? OK, boys, dinner. You made dinner. And Molly, look at you. Sweet yeah. pea. I'll go step for dinner. Mm, no. One dinner. That's all. It'll be fun. I promise. I'm not having him for dinner. I can tell you that. Did you say anything about dinner? Dinner's over, Marcus. Thanks for dinner. Hi! That's <laughs> disgusting. I can't believe you did that. Ew! <laughs> oh, now you're gonna say who? Are you serious? I don't operate that way. That's your cue. Here. Okay. Sorry. I think it's time we distance ourselves from the Whitakers. You know, no, it's not. Well, give it up. I think it's time we distanced ourselves. <laughs> Stay with me. Distanced. Somebody rip a fart. I think we. <laughs> Don't you agree? Huh? <clears throat> hey, Mark. Take six. <laughs> You want to read a story? Say it. <laughs> <laughs> Say it. <laughs> you know what? Say it. <laughs> Say a story. Yeah! With all of Fort Hope coming here, everyone's burning the midnight oil. Especially Frank. Frank? Uh -huh. What? <laughs> 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 Thank you. Appreciate your cooperation and I'm genuinely sorry for your trouble. Thank you. Yes. Are you done saying thank you? <laughs> thank you. I'll show you out that Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. 
doing such a nice spot too. Stop. Come on, man. Stop. I don't want to know. Okay, I'll take your word. Keep me posted. Will do. You're saying that I have to be really dorky and do this, is what I have to do. Perfect. Yeah, it's really fun. It feels good to do it like that. So nice to meet you, Roxy. I can't do it! I'm not doing it. I'm like, draw the line. Great character. <laughs> I'm like, I'm with a pantomime. <laughs> what about blueberry? Why does it have to be a food? That's what they all are. Or tofunk. I like pus. You do? Yep. Just look away from me. Like, yeah. keep your eyes away. <laughs> Drew, come on. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Do you think I'm... I'm, I'm trying to be a professional. Do you think... Mom dies, can I have a car? <laughs> oh, okay. Good job. That's a Robitussin talking. General Holden. Joan, Bobola. Come in. Come in. <laughs> I, I thought rather than lose the oi, I'd just make the rest of it work. <laughs> <laughs> Come in, what are you doing? Sit. Uh, I cracked myself up. Uh, my children have known this for years. Oh, fuck, I'm dead. <laughs> oh, look, it just comes right up. You're safe! Thank you. Whew, that was close. Listen up. That's our coin. <laughs> so I was just thinking. <laughs> I'm gonna do something a little salacious. As she goes by, check out her butt. Okay? Oh, wow. Are you kidding me? <laughs> um, would you like to come in? Kid, eyes up here. <laughs> <laughs> Her name wouldn't be Nicole Galassini, would it? <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. Wow. <laughs> Do you like small boys in gladiator movies? Cool set. He doesn't. <laughs> well said. You suck. <laughs> Soldier. <laughs> oh my god! Are you kidding me? Just <laughs> turn this way now. <laughs> I love my I job. <laughs> this is how romantic scenes are shot. <laughs> Tilt. Okay. Mrs. LeBlanc, you're pregnant. This will keep us here at least another two years. You might... Darn it! Why does it have to be a food? Because I... it does. <laughs> oh, brother! Oh, man. What? Who am I before a scene? <laughs> <laughs> oh, there's the door. So you don't think there's anything worth? Hmm. What? Well, for one thing, you always say never acting at. What's going on? I do say that a lot. Never acting yet. <laughs> That's quite a joy. Frank? Um, she's dead. Ah, oh, fuck. Pick a card. Any card. Not that, Clark. Dad. 
Not not that car. Dad. Ace of spades. Well, duh. Oh! Oh my God! Are you kidding? <laughs> ah! Yes! Yes! I did it! I did it! He's never yes! gotten it. He's never gotten it. He's never gotten it. Oh He's my God! What are the one. odds of that? Hi, honey. Ready Get out of here, it's my wife. <laughs> Code blue, room 215. <laughs> Where are you going? I gotta go that way. No, I'm trying to make you Bobby's in camera left. We got a problem. What? It's the camera, it can get bumped in there. <laughs> Dear, you okay? I didn't put my hand up when I was supposed to, and Tom's gonna be mad at me. So it's not gonna make it all better. Stop. Oh, God damn it. Sorry, Tito. Tito, <laughs> come on. What are you down there? How's it going? <laughs> Outstanding job. Outstanding job. Outstanding service. Outstanding efforts. Outstanding. 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 Outstanding, sir. Outstanding. Outstanding. You did an outstanding job.